18 subscribers. I am Jake Steve, and on today's video, I'm going to review the book The Golden Ratio The Story of Fee, the World's Most Astonishing Number by Mario Livio. There will be no spoilers today, for this is a non fiction slash essay about the number fee. For those that don't know, fee is an irrational number which can be achieved by this equation here 1 plus 5 squared divided by 2, which then equals 1.618033, continue, dot, 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 dot. This book starts out by talking about the history of numbers, then eventually leads up to talking about irrational numbers, the discovery of them. One part that I found funny about this was that the ancient civilizations, um, whenever they discovered irrational numbers, they thought they were evil, so they sacrificed sheep. Mario then goes on to describe the golden ratio, or the golden number, or fee, or 1.618033 dot dot dot, or the 21st Greek letter of the alphabet, which is this, which is also their number 500, or 500,000. Yes, it has all those names, fee does. Mario then goes on to tell the golden ratio's relationship with ancient civilizations, scientists, artists, architecture, natural life forms, astronomy, ammonites, dodecahedrons, cubes, spheres, and the such. I mean, this guy is paranoid. He tries to find out how his TV can represent the golden ratio. And does. Yes, that sounded like an Alice's Restaurant lyric. He does disagree with most of these occurrences as being intentionally or unintentionally related with the golden ratio, however. So this would lead me to believe that he is somewhat rational. <laughs> um, so I'd be wrong to say that he's paranoid. More so society, because everything in this book he relates to other references. That leads me to say that Mario did a brilliant job with his research. There are over 20 pages of bibliography in here. Um, and he describes it in very vivid detail that is understandable and is of the comprehensible English language. He doesn't use all these fancy mathematical terms to describe everything. Instead, he uses a language which any good reader should be able to understand. Um, with that being said, this is a great essay on fee. Now, I didn't think I'd be able to read a 250-page book on a number, but lo and behold, I did, and I couldn't put it down. If numbers don't interest you, or science or history for that matter, then don't read this book. I was curious as to why there's a 250 page essay on a number called Fee, which I never heard of before reading this, so of course I wanted to read it. It interested me. Um, it isn't like a fiction novel where the genre of the book really doesn't apply to whether or not you like it. This is nonfiction, and either you're interested in the discussed topic or you aren't. I mean, simple as that. With that being said, I conclude this book review with the ceremonial reading of the first few pages of the book. Prelude to a Number The famous British physicist Lord Kelvin, William Thompson, born in 1824, died in 1907, after whom the degrees in the absolute temperature scale are named, once said in a lecture, When you cannot express it in numbers, your knowledge is of meager and unsatisfactory kind. Calvin was referring, of course, to the knowledge required for the advancement of science. But numbers and mathematics have the curious propensity of contributing even to the understanding of things that are, or at least appear to be, extremely remote from science. In Edgar Allan Poe's The Mystery of Mary Roget, the famous detective Augustine Dupin says, We make chance a matter of absolute calculation. We subject the unlooked for and unimagined and mathematical formulate, formula of the schools. At an even simpler level, considering the following problem you may have encountered when preparing for a party. You have a chocolate bar composed of 12 pieces. How many snaps will be required to separate all the pieces? The answer is actually much simpler than you might have thought, and it does not require almost any calculation. Every time before you make a snap, you have one more piece than you had before. Therefore, if you need to end up with 12 pieces, you have to snap 11 times. Check it yourself. More generally, irrespective of the number of pieces the chocolate bar is composed of, 
of the number of snaps is always one less than the number of pieces you need. Even if you're not a chocolate lover yourself, you realize that this example demonstrates a simple mathematical rule that can be applied to many other circumstances. But in addition to mathematical properties, formula, and rules, many of which we forget anyhow, there also exists a few special numbers that are so unambiguous that they never cease to amaze us. The most famous of these numbers is pi, which is the ratio of the circumference of any circle to its diameter. The value of pi, 3.14159, dot 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 dot, has fascinated many generations of mathematicians. Even though it was defined originally in geometry, pi appears very frequently and unexpectedly in the calculation of probabilities. A famous example is known as Buffon's Needle, after the French math mathematician George Louis Leclerc, Comte de Buffon, 1707-1788, who posed and solved this probability problem in 1777. Leclerc asked, Suppose you have a large sheet of paper on the floor, ruled with parallel straight lines spaced by a fixed distance. A needle of length equal precisely to the spacing between the line is thrown completely at random onto the paper. What is the probability that the needle will land in such a way that it will intersect one of the lines? Example is in figure one. Let's see it there. Surprisingly, the answer turns out to be the number two divided by pi. Therefore, in principle, you could even calculate pi by repeating this experiment many times and observing in what fraction of the total number of throws you obtain in intersection. There exist, however, less tedious ways to find the value of pi. Pi has by now become such a household word that film director Darren Aronofsky was even inspired to make a 1998 intellectual thriller with that title. Thank you for watching a Bibliophile production and LZ production. Value of pi three point one four one five nine.